New tonight, SWAT teams destroyed her home, searching for a suspect who wasn't there. Now Melinda De La Torre's home is boarded up. The damage isn't fixed, and she wants to know why she has to pay for it. Kyra Simmons, Gary Horker is live in Renton, where that homeowner is demanding answers. Gary. You know, that homeowner tells me that the night this happened, SWAT teams actually apologized to her for destroying her home, and yet... The city of Renton has never adequately responded, she says, to her claims for damages. It's been almost two months since the SWAT team's mortars, grenades, and tear gas bullets peppered Melinda De La Torre's home of 15 years, and the scars are still everywhere. They wiped my whole life out from underneath me, and now I'm trying to pick it up and, and move on. She believes police made a big miscalculation when they shot up and stormed her house, but now she's stuck with a house she can't live in and a huge repair bill. The damage was horrendous. It was... Um, unbelievable that they would do that to somebody's home and then not find anybody in the home. Cairo cameras were here April 25th while SWAT teams filled Melinda's home with tear gas. They were after Melinda's son after a woman accused him of stealing from her. She said he was armed. Police believe Melinda's son was hiding out here, but he hadn't lived here for months and he was not here that night. For more than four hours, SWAT teams fired grenades through walls and windows, blasting in the doors with explosives. Then Melinda came home from work. He just kind of shook his head and said, I am so sorry, ma'am. It's your house and it's, you know, it's ruined. We've destroyed it. She says they gave her advice. Police officers and detectives that were there told me to file a claim with the city of Renton. Which she did, but while her claim is being okay. adjusted, she heard this from the city's claims okay. adjuster. He really doesn't think that they are liable, that they had just cause to do what they did to my home. They, I feel, used my house as a, a training facility. By the way, we have to point out, we actually got access to that home tonight, and the tear gas smell to this day is so strong, it makes your eyes water, it's very hard to see. We reached out to the city of Renton, they did not respond to us about Melinda's claims when they do, we'll report back to you. She says her son, by the way, has never been arrested for the alleged armed robbery that brought the SWAT team out here in the first place. Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN, this is part two and we're ready to go so more ridiculous stories and if you remember the first video i was talking about uh, about the state you know holding people up and uh you know they can shake them down for taxes and stuff like that uh and how immoral it is and then you just see the justification right so let's say that the student that, that, that her son did steal i mean they assaulted her house they destroyed it all because somebody reported that her son had stole right oh and he had he was armed oh, oh well then we better just start doing everything right and then the cops just said oh yeah you know you should just go to the claims adjustment uh, adjuster just have the taxpayers pay for it you like that so they had their own little training exercise they fucked up and then all the other people are going to pay for it then we have this article assault at twenty-five thousand feet now i know many of you have seen into the wild about uh, it's basically a true story and there's a movie uh, I think it's made by Sean Penn and uh, part one of the scenes is he wants to go uh, whitewater rafting and he's at the office and he's dealing with whatever state douche it is you know the forest ranger or something like that and a guy tells him he has to wait 10 years to paddle down the river to get a permit and um he kind of segues into this. Mount Everest climber allegedly attacked by authorities for not having a permit. It says a Chinese climber was reportedly just a few thousand feet from reaching the summit of Mount Everest when he was forced back down the mountain for not having a permit. So it says here that um, he was spotted camping alone. And he says here when the, client, when the climber was apprehended by members of the Tibet Mountaineering Guide School, uh, who has forcibly removed him from the trail and physically assaulted him, witnesses said. So it's interesting, this guy reacted, this uh, the hiker reportedly wheeled his axe when confronted by them. Well, I, I'd probably do the same thing. Get the fuck away from me. We're on a damn mountain. Do you own the mountain? No. Nobody owns the mountain. Get the fuck away from me. A piece of paper. And say, in a free, if you were actually free, if this individual is free, he would be able to defend himself and start swinging that axe and say, hey, if you really want to care about a piece of paper, you come get an axe in the head and see how much a piece of paper is actually that important to you. But that's the insanity, that's the um, 
uh, what is it, um, logical thinking of statism. So it says here in an email uh, to this, uh, basically the assistant, the Everest, to the Everest historian, sorry, one of the witnesses writes, I did see the permitless chap being ushered down the hill. The Tibetan rope fixers were set up to get him. I saw them bringing him down the ropes. And it says here, it was disgraceful. They literally kicked him down the ropes. It was a disgusting example of a pack of bullies egging each other on and literally beating him down the hill. He said, this is absolutely unnecessary as he was offering no resistance and was scared out of his mind. Who cares if he was offering resistance? The Tibetans should and could have escorted him down the hill and let authorities deal with him. Finishing up, permits for climbing. This is the state allowing you, giving you, the child, permission to act on something on your own will, right? Even if you waive liability. So it's here, uh, the permits for Everest are not cheap. It says here with outside reporting that they cost a minimum of $25,000 on the low end. So it's like the mafia, like the last video. It's the mafia. And you gotta, you gotta pay the shakedown to climb a freaking mountain, to paddle down a river. Then moving on here, Austin man facing 10 years in prison after photographing cops making an arrest. So there's been court cases that have actually uh, ruled in favor of an individual uh, who photographed police saying that it was not uh, infringing on his rights or interfering with police work. They were able to do it. So it says here, just after midnight on New Year's, uh, this individual, Antonio Bueller, spotted a pair of Austin cops manhandling a woman at a gas station during a DUI investigation. So he pulled out a cell phone and began taking photos. It says that, of course, prompted one of the cops to storm up to him and accuse him of interfering with the investigation. See, so interfering with the investigation, that's what they like to use now. So it says here, the, the cops shoved Bueller against his truck before handcuffing him. He was later claimed in this arrest report that Bueller had spit in his face. Just like, ooh, we, we smelled marijuana or alcohol in his breath. Hmm, another fucking lie that they like to put out there. I, I, would, I would interpret interfering with an investigation as going up with an axe and just hit him over the head or taking a taser and tasing one of the cops, right? That's actually interfering. Standing back taking pictures is not interfering, but hey. Police clamped down on truancy by ha hauling pupils from their beds and driving them to schools. So officers which enforce political law, uh, in political law enforces brainwashing of children in indoctrination camps known as education, we got to have education, and if you don't go, you're not going to make it in this new world order, this brave new world, so you better get in there and get to school. And if not, uh, the pigs are going to come and your beds, and they're going to take you out of your bed and take you to school, and then you're going to have an RFID chip or possibly a leg ankle bracelet for you to make sure that you don't leave the confines of the brainwashing camp. Oh, and while you're there, we, the state may hold exercises, simulations, uh, for when there's blowback to all of this engineering of society, i.e. a lone shooter comes in or can't take it anymore, doesn't know how to deal with it, and just starts shooting everybody up, or a terrorist, right? So we gotta be, we gotta carry out acts like that and scare the shit out of the students too, just in case. You remember me in the last set of videos saying how they're just setting up no-fly zones everywhere. Hey, no-fly zone in place over Wimb Wimbledon, the tennis match. Uh, first time in 10 years, and extra police officers on duty as security is beefed up. So are you going to be more secure with more, more pigs on the streets? No, you're not. No, you're not. In fact, you're actually less secure because you might get abducted off the street. You might get kidnapped. You might get robbed by them, or you might get assaulted by them. Those are very likely chances. So yeah, it says here, air exclusion zone last used in 2002 following the big great false flag uh, since Pearl Harbor September 11th attacks. It says here that the complaints were actually because of noise. That's why they were declaring a no-fly zone, because of noise. Okay, next up we have army training on St. Louis Street Stokes conspiracy theories. So it says here, that uh, every local news outlet reported the story the army planned to drive, ar well they didn't plan, they did it. They were driving arm armored vehicles throughout the city streets as part of a training exercise. And it goes on here and it says that like Orson Welles broadcast of War of the Worlds, which was a, definitely a PSYOP, that's why you're possibly going to see the whole stage alien invasion here in the near future, because they did this PSYOP and conducted it almost 100 years ago to see how people would react to it. So that wasn't just some grassroots bullshit. 
just like this. This is not some grassroots bullshit. This is a PSYOP, too, to see how the slaves are going to react to seeing possible, you know, basically a martial law type scenario. Well, see, the slaves didn't like it, and they were outraged, and they were a little perturbed. So, it's a conspiracy theory. You like that, being talked to like children? You know, and I guess this is the thing, right? Is that they go in there and it says our favorite response by the dozen of online conspiracy theorists who chimed in on the news report following the video recorded from a basement bunker, and it says enjoy. And this, of course, goes to an Infowars video, saying we're the only were we the only ones who envisioned a uh, video blogger as John Goodman's character in The Big Lebowski. So they're just making a big joke out of it. Uh, but on the other hand, you do have people like on Infowars or Alex Jones uh, who say that it is actually martial law. Well. No, it's just something that you should carry uh, in the news thing and put it out there so that people can see it and, and then try to break it down, all the bullshit propaganda reasons like, oh, people were saluting and you should get out of the way and get off your cell phone. But I do sometimes wonder if the whole point of Alex Jones uh, is to give other people, such as myself, a bad name. I, I probably don't even have a name at all, right, out there as far as having millions of subscribers and stuff like that. But it does. It gives, you know, Zero Hedge was was a good website, and they were kind of um, uh, included in that list. Here's some good news for people who are Brits, you know. Uh, some good news for you. British police officers to be armed with stun guns, so it should help you, make, help you feel safer, right? I mean, that's the rationale that you should feel safer now that cops in England are going to have tasers. That's right. They want to arm every police officer in the country with a taser gun. I just figured they already had them, but it says here France orders British drivers to bring their own breathalyzers as a list of holiday safety kit rows. Yeah, so this is kind of like uh, South America. I was looking into the regulations down there. They have to have a stupid uh, triangle, too. It says here in the latest headache for drivers in the country who are already penalized for not having a luminous safety vest or a warning triangle in the car. I think in South America you have to have a fire extinguisher too. It says road safety campaigners in the UK have warned that the French government approved breathalyzers which cost three pounds are actually of little use engaging whether a driver is over the drink drive limit. So it says here that the kit, breathalyzer kit costs 40 pounds and if you don't have it the fine is, they're saying nine pounds but it just seems kind of light probably until it gets shove down your throats long enough and people accept it and just say, uh, that's the way it is. We gotta have it. Oh, you know what? I'm glad we have those breathalyzers forced on us. You know, that was a very moral thing to do because, you know, it's really helped us. And then that $9 will go up to about 100 or $300. Next up says here, CSIS rewrites lexicon to better differentiate terrorists from sympathizers. It says, is he a terrorist or an extremist, a supporter or a sympathizer? It says the Canadian Security Intelligence Service has created a set of standard definitions for commonly used terms to guide staff through the super delicate task of labeling the individuals they're watching, surveilling. So, you know, a terrorist is someone that's going to carry out violence. These are usually people that are actually government agents and assets for the CIA and feds. But an extremist can be me. It can be you listening to this. It could be any intelligent person with an ounce of skepticism in their brain, right? That's left over after all that re-education and indoctrination. An extremist, on the other hand, is someone who holds an extreme belief or an interpretation of an idea, ideology, cause, or issue who may incite others to hold similar views and or advocates extreme measures, including the use of violence to draw attention to or, or advance a desired goal. So, and this is all being legitimized in the aftermath of the biggest false flag, government-sponsored terrorist attack in the world, 9-11. Extremist connections, Russian build targets hyperlink posters. Russian government suggested that finding persons who post internet links on materials deemed to be extremists. Proposal would close mass media outlets that commit such offense. Followed by Homeland Security suspends immigration agreements with Arizona police. So it says here that they're going to decline many calls from the state of Arizona reporting illegal immigrants to uh, Homeland Security. UK soldiers beat innocent Iraqi men in black ops jails deep beneath in uh, the surface in a mine. Look at this. CIA wanted torture cage for secret prison in Poland. How would you like to be going in there? I guess just don't be an extremist. 
global telecom governance debated at European Parliament workshop. So it looks like the United Nations Telecom Agency is going for an internet power grab. Check it out. And lastly, NSA social spy network Facebook is going to be using facial recognition technology to track individuals from tagging photos.